introduction. Uh, good afternoon. Um, the last uh, panel in this series. Um, my talk is about planning your HSC deployment. Yeah, there it is. So just uh, just a little bit of an overview. I'm not going to go too back far into uh, history on uh, ATSC. Um, but the goals of ATSC 3.0 are to address changing consumer behavior. Um, our platform is it's old, and we need a new platform. It's maxed out. There's really nothing more we can do with it uh, with today's television. And this will address growing consumer demands and also to add value to the broadcast business model and uh, service platform. So who has grandkids here? A few. OK, good. Ever had the little one get a hold of the remote today? It can cause havoc in the living room. But is this going to be the TV of tomorrow? <clears throat> so times are changing, and we've got to change with it. And so we set out to find a solution. Standards work in HSC 3.0 has been going on for better than six years. Um, great progress is made by thousands of people, thousands of man hours, um, truly international uh, makeup of the committee. And we knew that we had to find a solution or we we're going to just die. So HSC 3.0 is the marriage of broadcast and broadband delivery. We're combining the internet with broadcast to address some of the strengths of both and to leverage them. A big driver of this really is mobile devices and multi-service. New consumer services, new business models for broadcasters is the key pivoting point as well. As the CE, the consumer electronic manufacturers, uh, to put some new sets out there and, and get some better resolution, better quality experience out there as well. Key advancements of uh, 3.0, um, I'm not going to read all of these, you can read for yourself, uh, but really built on an IP platform, configurable, scalable, adaptable. There's already talk about ATSC 3. Dot maybe something else for later on, so um, efficient and interoperable. Now, while 3.0 is not directly compatible back with today's uh, 1.0, there are a lot of components that can be interoperable, especially in a mobile world. So the standard is largely done. And there are a couple of smaller things to, uh, to make adjustments. But now the real work begins. So my talk is not a technical talk. There's not a single formula or a bar graph in it. Um, but what really has to be done to bring this to the market, to bring this to, to the world, now that the standard is done? And now the bosses are starting to ask, what is this? What does it cost? Why do we need to do it? What if we don't do it? I've never gotten a laugh, a big laugh like this one out of my boss when I talked to him about spending <laughs> millions, but I tried. So happening now, um, Cox is a member of the Pearl Consortium. Um, they are doing a lot of work uh, in Phoenix, uh, a lot to date. Um, here are some bullet points. Um, you've got 12, a total of 12 stations um, that are involved. Cox Cable is there. Um, you've got uh, manufacturers, software equipment vendors. And the goal is to set a test bed and put the standard to the test, learn a lot, learn what works, We've learned a couple of things that may not work, but they'll adjust. And we launched the first uh, 3.0 Lighthouse in April in planning for a second uh, to launch in the first quarter next year. Now, a lighthouse, the concept of a lighthouse would be to get have a stick in a market that's transmitting 3.0. Simply said, that's the easy part. The hard part is getting everybody else moved over. In, oh, by the way, we need to stay on with 1.0. So um, I think Dave Folsom tomorrow uh, is going to walk through the kind of the chess game of moving this station than that one and, and keeping all this going. But the, the first lighthouse is running. So there is 3.0 being emitted um, by multiple channels in Phoenix. 
Um, the Phoenix test at this phase right now is closed. It's not an open consumer facing test. So it's really, again, in that spirit of, of a test bed. Uh, FCC Chairman Pai and Commissioner O'Reilly have, have gone and seen it and have had a lot of good comment and feedback from that. It's been in the press. Um, and now there are more tests that are underway and some upcoming tests there on transmission protection, application, the list goes on and on. Uh, the MVPD integration is going to be key as well. I mean, this, this thing has to work with cable. It's got to work with satellite. So it's a real market-based, major market uh, area to get our hands dirty with this and to learn. And it's working. It's working really well. The test will continue on all through next year. Also happening uh, recently, the Phoenix Test Plug Fest. Uh, so we had uh, 21 companies, 65 participants, um, a lot of topics, a lot of things tried. Um, these things do and do not necessarily go and hit the air, but it's just how you can really set things up basically on, on tables and, uh, and do a plug fest and learn uh, some of the ins and outs and what we need to do to really bring this to the real world. Um, some general alignment on the likely features of 3.0, I'll talk about in a second. Uh, and then um, over the air broadcast, uh, vendors engaged, equipment manufacturers engaged, and this is all working by a lot of people. Uh, this one I'm not going to read, uh, but these are some of the findings from the Phoenix Plug Fest. Um, my deck will be available for, for those uh, if you want to really read through this. Um, so this is the down to the math and science, and I promise this is not a technical talk, but these are some of the things that we've learned and will continue to refine and make better as we go down the adventure of 3.0. So what's next? So how are we going to pull this off? We talk about Lighthouse. We talk about how do I transition a station? Um, oh, by the way, we can't take 1.0 off. Um, how, unless you are a duopoly and you've got a second channel in your back pocket, how are you going to do this? So it's really going to take a lot of collaboration with markets and groups in adjacent markets, and the list goes on and on. So there's a lot of planning. Again, this Phoenix thing is the first of a lot of this to come and see how you're going to be able to do it. Uh, sure, there are technical implications. Sure, there are business implications. My point is, it's time to get started in working on these now. And while the standard is done and just about everybody here is engineering and knows how this works, well, there are other things that you've got to consider to pull this off. So really, the steps are simple. Build the basic platform. Um, do station to market transitions. That's, that's the lighthouse concept. Uh, determine the new features to deploy, and then go build it. Sounds pretty simple, but it's, it's not. It's going to take a lot of time, a lot of planning, and a lot of diligence to get through it. So how are you going to build your station in a market if you don't have an extra channel? We also know that, that uh, television general managers generally don't like to share a whole lot with their competitors and are very, very competitive. This is a case we're going to have to work together. Not necessarily all at GM level, but a lot of technical level, a lot of timing and things like you're not going to want to do a lot of these switches during the big sweeps months and, and things of that sort. So you're going to have to really carefully plan that out. Um, and, and sharing partners, you know, who's that going to be? Pearl is also working on a general framework of how that might look in a, in a construct. Um, every market's different, just like every station is different. So it's not going to be a template, um, so to speak. Open a continuing dialogue with the peers in your market. This is coming, so you might as well start to think about this and, uh, and get others involved that you're going to need their help and they're going to need your help as well. Keep costs to a minimum. We all know that drill. Um, there are going to be costs involved. There are going to be potential returns involved. So there's business planning that has to be done to see how this is going to work. And by the way, don't screw up what's working today. <clears throat> so this, uh, this slide is uh, uh, courtesy of uh, NAB Pilot. That should be familiar to a lot of you. 
Um, these items here with orange, these are parts of the flow that have to be replaced. These are the new things that have to be dealt with. Starting at the station at the studio site, um, you know, eventually you're going to have to do cameras and audio and switchers and master control, um, up, up converting. Oh, oh, then there's the conversion. We're trying to get to an IP based plant. That's pretty big in an existing studio facility. If it's a greenfield, it's getting to be a no brainer these days that you should build an IP plant. But most of them aren't. Then you've got, um, if you don't already have, you're going to need to deal with your STL. It's got to be IP. Um, uh, ATSC 3.0 exciter and a mask filter at the transmitter site. And then this part here at the home is still a bit of a, a little bit of a mystery. Um, receiving devices. Now you get, you, you get the big guys, the LG, Samsung, Sony's of the world, uh, and many others. They're diligently working to build receivers. Uh, tuners in the set, uh, but I would believe starting out will be a home gateway. So you have a receiver and then it would rebroadcast in the home. Basically an adapter uh, to get started with that. These items in yellow are the things that might need to be replaced. Maybe not at first. Um, what are the networks going to do? What are the networks going to provide? Are you going to need a new IRD? Is it going to be IP delivered? There are a lot of questions about that. Um, your transmitter, possibly, if you're not involved in the repack. And then the, the green items are things that you should be able to use now and, and get going. Um, I think uh, my belief is that the rollout of 3.0 and, and 4K or HDR, white color gamut, it's going to be quite similar to how HD went. So in the first days of HD, what did stations do? We got an IRD that was HD. We did a pass through. Okay, have the old AB switch, um, and we did a pass through of HD. And then on cable, there was the Discovery HD, the Discovery HD 2, and then there was HD Net, and they were cycling the same six movies all the time. But with time and investment, you, you got your plant to HD. Even today, some smaller markets are still not fully, fully HD from studio. But I think that the, the implementation, the rollout of this is going to be somewhat similar to that, starting with a network, sort of a pass-through, and some local originating content. So the pieces and parts. Uh, on the RF side, um, like I said, you're going to need that exciter, the mask filter, you're going to need an encoder, multiplexer, and then the, the ESG. You might need a new transmitter or two if you've got a, uh, a backup. Uh, if you're lucky enough not to be in the repack, this could be a, a, a question. Um, and then an IP-based STL. There's not a lot of people out there I know that have them, but that's going to be critical as well. Uh, you might want some circular polarization in your pattern. That's getting to be about too late if you're in the repack. Um, the opportunity with that to get some vertical uh, component in your transmission is with your antenna, and for those getting repacked that need a new antenna, Now's the time, if not too late, uh, to get that in your new antenna so you only change an antenna once. So it's an out-of-pocket incremental cost, but that's the time to do it. The circular polarization would be for mobile. Studio pieces and parts. So again, if, if we start out with, a say, a network pass-through, um, what are you going to do next? Okay, What are you doing on your studio production side? Your, your cameras, um, I can say for us in Cox, we're going through a, a cycle now of replacing all of our studio cameras. We're going with 4K IP output um, that can do UHD. So again, if you look back 10, 12 or so years ago, you wanted cameras that were HD ready. So now's the time to get cameras ready for the next generation of whatever this is going to be. Manufacturers are all in tune. They've got product um, and they are, they're all functional. Um, next gen audio, uh, I, I think a key part of 3O's functions, and I think we'll get a lot of attention and interest from the consumer, is on the audio side. 
what are we going to do about it? What are we going to deliver? Um, playout servers, your master control as you grow, um, up conversion, that network IRD, or whatever that box is going to look like, um, and then ad replacement. There's a lot of buzz, there's a lot of talk about DAI, dynamic ad replacement with 3.0. I think there's a lot of promise with that. I think there's a lot of revenue promise with that. But there's still some things that have to get worked out. And oh, at stations, we don't have people. We don't have people to deal with things like that. Okay. So what are we going to do about it? So it's one of those things to solve. So then we have the IP distribution chain. And this slide is courtesy of Trevini Digital. Um, you saw this yesterday uh, in the uh, presentation. So now you start overlaying and bringing in the broadband side of this. How does that work? You know, not a lot of us that have been in this business 30 something or whatever years have a lot of experience at this whole thing. So here on the left is your studio leading up to your SDL link. This is your RF, but not a lot of experience at this piece here, uh, the cloud delivery, the origin servers. We're learning, we're learning more about the uh, studio part of this, the, the green boxes, okay? And then what's gonna be the target devices? How will we start out with um, uh, receiving this on the consumer side? The gateways, eventually we'll get the chip built into the set on the tuner, and then you've got your cable carriage, your MVPDs, and things to figure out. So when you start to consider the IP chain and the broadband, you're gonna need servers, okay? Um, I heard earlier uh, earlier today a mention of you know we you know broadcast engineers years ago we didn't like computers okay well guess what that's our world now okay so these things change but it's going to be a lot of servers um, a lot of software uh, a lot of virtualization opportunities so this doesn't mean that you're buying 22 different boxes to put into your plant anymore so it's a really really good case for virtualization. Uh, with very little hardware dedicated. And uh, I think for some stations, depending on where they are and their replacement cycles and where your studios are and the age of things, this could be a good starting place to really knuckle under and get your IP backbone, get your studio transitioning to IP. I think it's a good opportunity and a good time for that. You're gonna have to do it anyway. But you know, you take, I, I joke with people, you take an old TV facility, you know, 30, 40, 50 plus years old with the old poured concrete trenches and, you know, these old buildings, to make a transition to all IP is huge. And if you look in those trenches, you know, it's like almost like taking a core sample of the earth. <laughs> here's the black and white days, you know, and oh, here's when we went stereo. You can't just rip all that stuff up and unfortunately, the live wires are on top of the dead wires. So it might be a good place to start from scratch and start to build out a future uh, IP plant. Business considerations. So better start figuring out what features and functions we're going to start out with. There are 20 something new functions that 3A will enable. And I contend that we would be best to start out doing three or four or five, those that have the highest consumer value proposition, and do a really good job with those few rather than trying to do a crappy job of all this stuff. And you know, I, I don't think just putting out today's HD is gonna do any good, and I don't think it's gonna make us any better. It's not gonna get the attention of the consumer. We've gotta wow them. We have got to get them a reason to get in the store and to buy a new TV set. So there's a whole host of things to try, a whole host of things to do. Some of this may de also depend on who the other stations are in your market. So again, have that coordinated effort and, and uh, engage with your peers and also for station groups to determine, oh, we think we want to start out with this one, this one, and that one. Right now, it's just all up in the air. So you need to determine what you want to start out with. 
playing well with others. Okay. There are legal and technical implications all over the place here. Okay. So if you stop and think that, yes, we got the technical stuff here, we've got the engineering, we can wire this up together, there are resources to get going, we're learning from Pearl, Sinclair's learning from Dallas, uh, there's Cleveland, there's people are getting their hands dirty with this now. But anybody that's seen a retrans or a network agreement, it's pretty specific. It's pretty specific on your bit rate, your minimum bit rate, and some other parameters. So while we may all have the engineer hat on, you need to also think with the business hat on and the legal hat on. Um, these network agreements here are usually about every three years they renew. Well, that's now starting to come in range. Three years, this thing is starting to happen. So you don't want to just go and rubber stamp and renew a retrans or a network agreement right now because you might get you might get mapped in. Syndicated programming. That's a little bit less, but still, you've got an independent station, you've got other programming, you're a Fox affiliate. You know, what are you going to do on those agreements on your service, your bit rate, and, and other things that where we see this big pie in the sky? Well, when you really get down to it, it's got to work on the legal side. It's got to work on the technical side. Not, and these are things that are just not the standard, okay? Just about everybody sends a, a, a backhaul feed to the cable head in. Okay? That's got to change. Network feed formats. We're not hearing a lot from the networks right now on what sort of format. What, are they going to do 4K? Are they going to do HDR? What have you. Let's hope we don't wind up in a mixed world. But uh, that's another uh, thing to consider. What about the little Ma and Pa cable carriers that receive you over the air? and turn around and retrans that through their cable. That's got to be figured out. I mean, these are all agreements and, and contracts that have to be dealt with. And, and having that engagement and have that dialogue is going to be really, really important. How's this going to work with satellites? Okay. So I would say to spread the word, to engage your leadership, bring them in. Um, they're hearing about it. Don't worry, they're hearing about it. <laughs> um, but it depends on the viewpoint they have. You know, a, a CFO or a, or a financial person or a sales director sees dollar signs in their eyes, okay? It's like, oh, we can just do this really easy, right? It's no big deal, right? Well, it's kind of a big deal. So engage your leadership, um, talk to them, uh, tell them what this is about, tell them what is involved. Um, evangelize your support of 3.0, bring this up, in your local SMPT or SBE meetings, whatever is in your, in your hometown. It's a really good topic. There are a lot of good speakers out there who are excited and happy to come and talk to you in your market about 3.0. So loop them in. We're all stronger together. And finally, uh, educate yourself. Uh, I think that's why we're all here today. Um, but educate your management, your staff, and also train your engineers in IP. The, or they're going to just be so behind the curve. So it's easy to not dedicate the time in this world when we don't have enough resources. It's easy to not dedicate the money it's going to take to do it. But if you don't do it, you're going to get sunk before this thing even starts. So for those who may not know about the transition and deployment guide, um, there's a link on uh, hsc.org. Uh, there are links on other manufacturers' websites, the same document. Um, it's, it's, it's substantial, so um, it's informative. You'll come out a lot smarter. Uh, there are some parts of it for me. If I can't sleep at night, it'll put me to sleep. <laughs> but uh, I encourage you to take a look at that. There is a version two of this out now from the original, and a number of folks in this very room contributed to writing that. Um, I cannot stress enough. So, um, Kelly Williams over for the NAB. I run the Cleveland Experimental Lab at ETSC3. The IP part of this is no joke. Um, I would say that you don't just need to be trained. You need, uh, what, it's CNE level training. Um, you need very serious network engineers. Um, we have... We've been in business, we've been sort of on the air, full-fledged, 
about a year, we just completed the fourth rebuild of a network that encompasses four racks. Because every time we get into something, we learn. So if you don't have CNE trained engineers, either go hire some or send, you know, start now. The other interesting point, switches. We've learned more about switches and what switches can and cannot do in the last year. So it gets down to the network stuff. Um, once you get past the network stuff, the, the IP network, it's all pretty straightforward. Kind of. Excellent <laughs> points. Yeah. Excellent points. Thank you very much. Yeah, Great so presentation. The old, is it easier to train uh, an IP person engineering or train an engineer IP? It could be done either way. I've seen it work either way. But the, uh, the, the traditional uh, TV engineers are we're all kind of dying off, you know? It's like, so I, I contend that this is a good time to get some young blood in the business and, and, and really exploit that. So good comments, Kelly. Thank you. Ted. Yeah, you had a, a, uh, a slide that showed a lot of the features and uh, the business opportunities for ATSC 3.0. And I know that the uh, Pearl Group is looking at you know, basically testing, exercising, all those things. Is there any um, group census on what kind of features or business models are going to try to deploy first? Um, there is some, some consensus. Um, there is a, a very good presentation tomorrow about that uh, from Dave Pearl, uh, Folsom with Pearl. Um, he may have some travel difficulties down in the southeast where the storm is going. But, uh, but nonetheless, that, that paper will be tomorrow, and I think you'll get a lot more out of that. All right, thank you.